All right, it's time for a shark week of sorts. Uh, there's an interesting question that I'm sure many women have pondered, which is uh, if sharks can smell blood, and if you are menstruating, will the shark smell you, and will it eat you? I know that's kept me up at night, Kim. Yeah, as someone who actively loves the indoors, it's kept me <laughs> up as well. Um, but it's it's something to think about, which is, you know, could this actually happen? I mean, we, we hear about shark attacks all the time, well, not seemingly all the time. They don't actually... Uh, they really actually don't statistically happen don't happen very but often. But I think when we do hear about them, we get terrified. Poor and sharks. there's a, well, let's get into some schools of thought. Uh, we have um, research done by Dr. Steve Cagiota, uh, Florida and Atlantic University's Shark Lab on the subject, um, talking about the truthfulness of whether sharks can actually smell blood from a mile away, which is uh, not true. They can detect blood from a quarter mile away. However, uh, menstrual blood is not really the kind of blood they're talking about. It's not straight blood. This may shock some of you who are not women. Uh, it contains... Um, mucus. The, you're not going to like this. Cervical mucus, vaginal <laughs> secretions, mucus and cells, uh, endo, endometrial particles as well as blood. However, it is sometimes clotted blood. So if it were... The, the, the shark would have to be very close to be able to smell this. And if the shark is that close you're going to notice it, I think. Um, it would need to be a, a non-aquatic mucus and have uh, an ability to sense the endometrial particles. Um, however, when speaking to Dr. Tricia Meredith, who literally wrote the book on the olfactory senses of sharks, um, she was determining how well sharks can smell uh, some like material related to their prey. And she found that uh, they can detect prey odors as uh, a minute as one part per billion, which is about the background noise of the ocean. However, that's superhuman, but that's like on the, that's on par. It's not a special, especially olf strong olfactory sense. Right, so so to begin with, they, they don't actually have as easy a time of sniffing out blood as we might think, mm -hmm. especially since menstrual blood isn't like straight isn't up really blood, yo. The blood you're thinking of. Yeah. And then it just, you have to think about how the, um, I mean, if let's say you have a cut, it's going to be. It's going right. to bleed out and, more. And it's flowing. To, and it's actually, not really the same as. Fun fact: because of the pressure of water, uh, when you're swimming, uh, it's like you don't bleed out during yeah. when when you're in your period, just because of the water pressure it keeps it right right back in there. Yay! That's right, Internet. I'm talking about Nancy's. They're not gonna like it. It's okay. <laughs> um, sharks how, are, however, especially uh, electroreceptive. They're able to detect tiny electromagnetic fields in the water as opposed to smelling it. And this is um, from a specific kind of pore organ called the ampullae of Lorenzini, which is pretty incredible. It is located on the snout. Um, electromagnetic fields, like really receptors. tiny yes. electromagnetic uh, fields they can detect. Which will help them detect prey. That's crazy. Um, and all, all animals detect, uh, emit a, an electrical field. So uh, muscle contractions will release bioelectricity, so moving around. Um, so, I mean, so they, they can, they can sense us and they can sense it uh, a little, but even if a shark's right up next to you, humans really aren't their primary prey. Well, we're not really on the menu for tasty. them. We're not special. And, and most of the shark attacks that happen are because they think we're seals. Like they'll see like the, the surfboard and then the limbs coming off of it and they'll think it's a seal and that's why they go for it. But mm -hmm. once they realize it's a seal, they'll usually let go or, or not try and eat somebody because they're, we're gross. Human, humans are kind of gross. Yeah, well, specifically, Dr. Meredith didn't even use human blood in her uh, study to see how the shark could perceive the, the smells of the, the prey-related odors. She used something that they would actually like. Uh, so that, that you, can, you can imagine what she had said about the, uh, the sensitivity to the smells they like. But let's imagine it's a smell they don't like, which is us. So it's even lower. Uh, we also need to remember that red blood cells are not especially conductive, but the plasma they float in is highly conductive. It would need to be dependent on blood flow, which you mentioned earlier, um, was, is not really happening in this particular stance. So um, Dr. Kajiota had something, uh, to, uh, an evocative quote to describe this. You can smell a landfill, but it won't make you want to eat it. Thanks, doctor. Uh, so basically, that's his way of saying they can probably sense us, but they're not really interested in eating right. us. And it's not particularly sensed in another way. 
and he uh, it was kind of gross. But sure, we'll, we'll we'll allow it. I tell you, I got to tell you what you got to worry about, Kim. It's the sharks of the land, polar bears. <laughs> Polar bears, in a 1983 study, apparently were found to be attracted to human, specifically human menstrual blood. Not human blood, like if you got a cut, they wouldn't care about it, but they, they are uh, sensitive to human menstruation. I read somewhere that their periods attract bears. The bears can smell the menstruation. So, polar bears, land sharks. Okay. I'll stay where it's warm. So there you go. You're probably going to be okay in the ocean uh, if you are menstruating. So don't worry too much. Worry about polar bears. Let us know what you think below in the comments. And please like and subscribe for more anti-polar bear news.